Hello and welcome to the Foilist TV. Today, we're looking at our penultimate Rio bout, Richard Cruz vs. Timur Safin for the bronze medal. As always, you can find the video of the bout itself all commented and ready to watch on my website, linked in the description. Cruz had an action-packed run to get this far, beating Hamid Santes 15-4, Andrea Casara 15-12, Garrick Meinhardt 15-13, and then losing to Alex Masialis 15-9. Meanwhile, Safin beat fellow Russian Alexei Cheremisinov 15-10, then James Andrew Davis 15-13, and then Shen Haiwei 15-7, before losing 15-8 to Daniele Garazzo. For the analysis, we'll first take a look at Safin's offense against Cruz's defense, and then the other way around. So if you've watched any of my videos on Safin, you'll know all about his marching attack with the super long and compound finish, which is pretty much his go-to in almost every situation. In general, Cruz couldn't do much about Safin's finish this bout, but Safin's march was pretty vulnerable to Cruz's antics, notably his very powerful stop hit. Eventually, Cruz figured out how to consistently escape from Safin's long advance lunge, so Safin started finishing with a beat disengage flesh, effectively covering the distance of his advance lunge in a single tempo. At that point, Safin had two choices to finish, and Cruz eventually had three choices to deal with it. Safin could flesh or advance lunge, and Cruz could retreat and parry, stop hit, or counter and crush. The interactions between them looked something like this, bearing a strong resemblance to the tactical wheel but with one additional factor. Being the attacker, Safin could make his choice at will, and Cruz only had a split second to make his choice once Safin committed. Later on in the bout, things started looking a bit more like this. Safin's advantage of being the attacker was offset by Cruz's choices being more effective against more of Safin's. Okay, on the other side of things, Safin's main defensive tool, and in fact one of his most highly scoring actions of the entire bout, was a very fast and robotic looking parry riposte. That action alone did a lot of the work in the first half of the bout, until Cruz started turning his normal relaxed and simple finish into a setup for a second intention counter riposte. Often, he would deliberately finish into a closed line, since Safin's riposte was so predictable. And on top of that, he mixed in a remise with all of that just to complicate Safin's otherwise very simple response as much as possible. The only two other things worth mentioning were Safin adding a disengage to his fast parry riposte, which was stunningly effective the few times he used it, and a twisty counterattack, which was stunningly ineffective, to the point that Cruz hit him pretty much every time he tried it. As you can probably gather from both sides of the analysis, Cruz's tactical position improved a lot towards the end of the bout, and the scores reflected that trend. Safin got off to a very strong lead, getting as far as 6-12 to early in the second period. But once the tactical situation flipped, Cruz started to claw his way back to 13-14 to by the end of the second period. Unfortunately for Cruz, it just wasn't enough, and Safin stole the last touch early in the third period to win 15-13 to and claim the bronze medal. That does make Cruz the only men's foilist at Rio to lose two individual bouts, but seriously his fencing was very fun to watch at this tournament, and by all appearances he's still going strong in the international scene, and Safin is still right up there with him, still using that same style. Thanks for watching. Click the links on the screen to see my analysis of both fencers' previous bouts from the semi and quarterfinals. Links to their other bouts are in the description, along with the link to my Discord server and the commentated bout on the website. Wow, only one left. Stay tuned for that final, Garazzo vs. Masialis, and until then, as always, stay sharp.